Okay, let's start. Let's. <coughs> Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa Namo dasa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodasa. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> Today we will start to learn uh, different type of chaitas, right? Different type of consciousness. So. I hope you understand about uh, ultimate realities and conventional reality, right? So we are not going back. So now we are going to learn different type of consciousness. So actually, uh, sometimes I may use the word consciousness or I may use the word chaitas, sometimes the mind. So normally, according to Abhita uh, Matasangaha. So we have to use consciousness and mental factor to, uh, differently, right? But sometimes I may use the word the mind, right? Sometimes if I refer to the mind, it can be consciousness, it can be mental factor, right? Mostly uh, for the chaitas, we translate as it the mind, right? So we have four classes of Consciousness. So we are uh, in terms of the plane, classifying by way of plane, Bhumi. So we have we have sense fear consciousness, Kama Vajra Chaita. Sense fear consciousness. Actually, um, we have a um, and I will explain one by one later. So here, sense fear consciousness, Kama Vajra Chaita. Number two, five material sphere consciousness. So we have a uh, 15, five sphere consciousness. And we have 50, uh, 54 sense fear consciousness. Then number three, we have twelve immaterial sphere consciousness. And number four, supra mundane consciousness. We have eight supra mundane consciousness. So altogether we have eighty nine. So this is we are classifying chaitas by way of play or realms, right? So we have eleven realms. Uh, since we are eleven realms. So we have 65 five material spheres, sphere realms. So we have four immaterial sphere realms. But for the supramundane consciousness, we don't have any realms. We will were, we were, uh, explain one by one. So these are, we classify consciousness according to the plane, right? According to the plane, since sphere consciousness. Let's talk about sense fear consciousness. So here, uh, CMA me, um, Emmanuel Abhidharma. This one, this one. Maybe next week we will distribute this book <laughs> so that you can read, eh? so that you can read. So I think, uh, so CMA me, Emmanuel Abhidharma. So it refers to this book. So it shows you can read about this sense fear consciousness as page number 30. So H A S M E Handbook of Abhidharma Study. So volume 1, page number 55. So these are the pages. So if you after you learn uh, this class, then you can go to those pages and read. Then I will give you uh, 
I haven't seen you saw copy, right? So I will seen you saw copy of those books as well, right? But next week we will distribute uh, manual of Vidyama. So what is sense fear? Consciousness. In Pali, Kama Vaitra Chaita. Kama Vaitra Chaita. Actually, um, sometimes we might use Pali word. So I think uh, some of the words you, I think, it's better to memorize. Only some, not, not all, 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 all the Pali, right? All the Pali. So sense, fear, consciousness. So we have uh, 54, sorry, sorry, <laughs> not 45, 54. We have 54 kinds of sense, fear, consciousness. So those consciousness frequently arise in the 11 planes or 11 realms. Actually, we have a 54 type of sense fear consciousness. So those chaitas or consciousness frequently arise, generally arise in the 11 realms. In the 11 realms. So also, so they, the chaita may arrive in other planes as well. As you know, number one, we have 11 realms. So those 54 consciousness arises in the 11 realm generally. But it may arise other realms as well. Rupa and our Rupa, right? Five material realm, it may arise. It may arise. And, um, and also, um, immaterial sphere realms, right? It may arise. So therefore, uh, they are called as a sense sphere consciousness. So here, um, for 11, 11 planes, I think um, briefly, so you can remember, we have a six heavenly realms, six heavenly realms, and also human realms. And we also have a woeful plane, four woeful planes, so all together 11. So those consciousness or chaitas generally arise, occurs in those realms, right? Because in those realms, so everything is connected with the sense. So when I see something, then unconsciousness arises. So unconsciousness is called sense fear consciousness because it's connected with senses, right? That if I hear the song, I have ear sense. So in this way, ear consciousness arise. So ear consciousness, ear consciousness is among the 54 type of consciousness, right? So therefore, they are called sense fear. They are connected with the senses, right? Based on the senses, these consciousness arises. So regarding with the karma, so I think it is uh, good to know, good to know about two type of karma. Number one, what to karma? So objective sensuousness. So that is the five external sense objects. Something you see, that is called karma. Something you hear, the sound, that is also called karma. And uh, something you smell, something you taste and touch. So all these are called karma, right? Actually, we are learning consciousness or we are learning the mind. So therefore, we don't need to take this one, objective sensuousness. So what we have to take is, number one, number two, type of karma, subjective sensuality. So that is kilesa karma, craving for sense pleasures, craving for sense pleasures. So when we experience with our, uh, the objects, outside objects, with our senses, then there is a type of mind that arises. So those are called karma. But here, uh, generally karma means craving for sense pleasures. Because uh, the sentient beings, who are living, 
who have those type of consciousness, generally they have craving. Craving me desire, right? Desire to see something. So those are Kama Vajra Chaita, sense fear, consciousness, and desire to hear something. So you have those type of minds. So those minds are called sense fear, consciousness, because they are connected with the senses. They are, connect, they are connected with the craving for sins, pleasures, right? So we have number two, five material sphere consciousness. To Bhavajra Chaita. So we have 50 type of five material sphere consciousness, which arise mostly in the 60 planes. So we can call them Rupa Jhana Chaitas. Rupa represent uh, the realm. Jhana is a, uh, if we translate it simply, is a meditation. So when you meditate, so in the higher level, you can attain those type of jhana those type of consciousness. So those are called jhanas. So I think, um, so 50 type of five material consciousness. So they normally arise 60 planes. Of course, when you meditate in human realm, also you can attain those consciousness. But we are talking in general, right? So therefore it is called a vajra. A vajra me frequently arising. Frequently arise only in 60 planes. 60 planes. Actually, strictly speaking, so it is only 50 planes. Rupa Loka. We call it Rupa Loka. Rupa Ram. Right? Rupa Ram. So normally we are 60, but when Ram does not have any mind, so it has only the body, the body, material form. So therefore, in that realm, except in that realm, we have 50 rupa planes, rupa realms. So these 50 type of fine material consciousness generally arise in those realms. So therefore, it is called Dupa Vajra Chaita. Five material consciousness. So yeah, I want to explain about five material. Why we use five material? Normally, um, these rupa jhana chaitas. So, when you want to attain jhanas, rupa jhanas, so you have to meditate using one meditation object. Suppose when you are meditating using in-breath and out-breath. So you have to use it. So at the beginning, so when you are breathing in and when you are breathing out, it is too obvious. You have to make a lot of effort. So that in-breath and out-breath is not set It is, uh, it is very, uh, it is Gross, right? Gross or rough. It's obvious. It's not subtle. It's not refined. So as you are practicing, as you are practicing, then you are in breath and out breath, getting subtler and subtler. Getting refined and refined. So in this way, so at the certain level, you will attain the first jhana, the first jhana. So when you attain the first jhana, so you are in breath and out breath is very tranquil and also very refined. So therefore it is called rupa, uh, fine material. So it is not like seeing the object, it's not like hearing the song. So when you attain jhanas, so your senses are not walking with, with, uh, with the sense of uh, <coughs> with the external objects, external objects. So you are just using in-breath and out-breath, right? 
So when you attain the first jhana, so you are, your breathing is uh, stable, sete and sete, setela and setela, right? Then second jhana, more, more refined, and third jhana, more refined. But when you attain the fourth jhana, there is no in breath and out breath. So you are not, there is no in breath and out breath. You are not breathing at all. So refine that. So breathing does not occur in, 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 at that level. But, but you are using, you are using uh, material. Material me in breath and out breath is called material. Material form. Rupa, right? Rupa. You are still using. You use it as a meditation object, right? Meditation object. But when you write for jhana, so you are meditation object is a breathing, no more. So therefore it is called fine material, right? Fine material, a very refined. Another one is the akasina, akasina. Actually, uh, we, this is one type of meditation. So actually you can use different type of meditations. For those who are prefer in breath and out breath, you can do so. But some people prefer to meditate on the quality of the Buddha and the quality of the Dharma and Sangha like this, right? And some people use Kasina object. The art Kasina object. So there is, you make, um, you find out a clay, then you make it, uh, you, you put it on the wall as a sake. So you just look at that sake, the art sake, the art sake. So there's no any other thinking or no, no any other thought. So you have to, uh, you have to just focus on the art sake. The asake, the a, the a, the a, the a. Just in your mind. So just repeat it in your mind, in your mind. Just think this is a sak, uh, the a, the a, the a, the a. So when you are looking at, uh, looking that the asake for a long time, so that, that sake appear in your mind, even when you close your eye, right? So if that the asake appear in your mind, even you close your eye, you can go anywhere. And you close your eye, you visualize that the asake. So when you are meditating, concentrating on that object for a long time, so that object became very clear and very shiny. Shining, very shining. So at the end, the art is removed. No, so that, that object, that saga is no the art at all. Just uh, the sake appear in your mind's eye, right? Actually, at the, the art level, it is material, right? Material form. But when it go to, uh, when you close your eye, at first you may still appear, you may still see material form, the art, right? But as you go along, when you're practicing, 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 that at the end, those, the art, appear, and clay appear, just a shiny sake. So it became very refined, right? So therefore, it is called fine material. So when you meditate, when you meditate, it is no real material form at all. No real material form. It is just concept in your mind. Just concept in your mind. The round sake, a concept in your mind. So just focus on that concept, you meditate on it, right? So therefore, when you attain jhanas, it is called fine material consciousness. So you are, you, you, you are in your mind, there are so many fine material consciousness in your mind, right?
So we have 15, 15. So when you go there, we will learn in details. So we have a different um, uh, jhana factors. So when you have those factors, when you complete all those factors, you attain jhana, right? You attain jhana. So therefore, we call it five material consciousness. So we have 15. Another one, number three, immaterial sphere consciousness. Arupa Vajra Cheda. Arupa Vajra Cheda. Sometimes we may call Arupa Cheda, right? So the first one, the first one is Kama Cheda. So we have 54. And second one, Rupa Cheda. We have 15. So now, in material sphere consciousness, we might call it Arupa Cheda. It's easier, I think. Right? It's easier. Arupa Cheda. We have a tray, tray Arupa Cheda. So those tray type of immaterial consciousness frequently arises in the four planes. So we have four Arupa planes, four Arupa realms, right? So those consciousness generally occurs in those planes. So therefore, they are called immaterial consciousness. So actually these are Arupa Jhana Chaitas. Arupa Jhana Chaitas. So Jhana me, the consciousness, uh, consciousness um, arises because of your meditation. Because of your meditation. It's called Jhana, right? So Arupa Jhana Chaitas. What is Im immaterial? So those Rupa Jhana Chaitas can be attained by using formless meditation objects such as the infinity of space, the infinity of mind, etc. So we have four objects to meditate uh, to attain Arupa Jhana Chaitas. We have four objects. So the first one is infinity of space. Actually here the meditator doesn't want any material form. He doesn't like it. So therefore, he trying to stay away with the material form. So remember that, so when you are practicing Kasina, the art Kasina Sake, right? Kasina Sake. So at the initial level, you close your eye, then you stay appear, you stay can see uh, the art material, the art material. Then as you go along, though the art disappear, the only shiny sake, right? Shiny sake. So that shiny sa shiny, shiny sake is not real material form. So that is, we call it panyadi, concept in our mind. So it is a, an image, an image in our mind. So actually, this is not real material form. But meditator, for those who doesn't like material form, he even doesn't like that shining, shiny sake, that concept. Therefore, he trying to, he want to remove that meditation object. So he think that by contemplating by meditating on that object, mm -hmm. the mind is not stable enough. The mind is still shaking, not stable yet. So therefore, he went to discard that object. So the matter is, have to enlarge. You know, it is only one feet sake. Initially, it is only one feet sake. So you want to remove that sake in your mind's eye, so therefore, trying to enlarge in your mind. Only in your mind, right? Only in your mind. Initially, it is only, only uh, one feet sake. I'm trying to enlarge ten feet, trying to enlarge the site of Mangala Vihara, then trying to enlarge the site of Singapore, and trying to enlarge 
the size of this this our planet. So you can you can make it. You can enlarge as much as you you, you as much as you can, right? So when you enlarge, the size of Singapore is too big, right? Very big. Then um, at the middle of the sake, just a shiny object, right? There's nothing. So by that time, you trying to imagine in your mind. That very big sake, right? Shiny sake. <coughs> Infinity or space. You know, the space doesn't have anything, right? The space between you and the other person, there's a space. In between, nothing, right? Nothing. So therefore, you're trying to imagine that very big sake as a space. Space. Nothing, space, just space. So in this way, uh, that very big sake became a very big space. Actually, is it just meditating with your mind, right? Just playing with your mind. So by that time, your concentration is very, very sharp, right? So you can do whatever you want. So even that very big sake, you can imagine in your mind's eye is infinity of space. So in this way, he removed the notion of material form, right? Even not real material form. It is material form that appear in your mind, right? He trying to remove it. So in this way, his mind is free, no attachment to the senses, no attachment to the material form. So I will give you one example. The reason why they practice immaterial jhana, immaterial jhanas. So the reason is, when we see something, when we hear something, we have craving, we have away, we have hatred, right? He doesn't like those negative emotions. So he think that by removing material forms, that he can uh, temporarily suspend the rising of craving, rising of evil, hatred. So I will give you one example. You go to East Coast, right? East Coast. But when you go East Coast, you may see a lot of, lot of ship, a lot of boat, right? and some island but you go to um, very far remote place not in Singapore maybe in Australia you go there and you go near the ocean but in your in your eye just see the ocean right just see the ocean nothing no island no people no ship nothing if there is nothing, there is no chance for craving, right? No chance for craving, just like that. So the reason why they practice immaterial jhana is so to stay away from craving, right? Craving. So therefore, in that jhana state, there is no even, uh, even material, you know, material form. Uh, appear in, in our mind's eye already disappear, right? So therefore, he used formless meditation objects. Formless me, no form. Just here, the infinity of space. Total space, right? There's no form. Between you and other person, space, right? No material form, like this. So therefore, we call it immaterial sphere consciousness. So in that realm, there is no material form. So the living being there, so they live only with the mind, right? Only with the mind. So therefore, we call it arupa. Arupa means immaterial. They don't have any material form. 
but in Rupa 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 Ram in Rupa Ram Rupa uh, Rupa Wasa Ram so of course uh, they have a uh, they have a form and they can see they can hear right they can hear <coughs> the last one is supramundane consciousness local trachea supramundane consciousness so we have eight type of consciousness so they transcend three three worlds or three planes so as you know we have Kama Loka, Rupa Loka, Arupa Loka. Kama Ram, Rupa Ram, Arupa Ram. So actually, actually, none of these consciousness are uh, nothing to do with those realms. They transcend, they go beyond. Actually, is it hard to explain? So I think um, when you attain, when you attain, uh, one of these consciousness so you are mind is liberated liberated from craving craving toward those three type of realms three type of realms therefore transcending the state right transcending the state so they are so called because they go beyond sphere of three worlds so sometimes, as I said, so when somebody attain Rupa Jhana, when somebody attain Rupa Jhana, he doesn't have any desire to enjoy with with his senses. With his senses. He just enjoy his meditative state to mind. So therefore I often said that. So actually, our happiness in the human realm, in the uh, heavenly realms. So our happiness dependent on the people, dependent on the objects, right? Our happiness dependent on the weather and political situations, <laughs> like this. So actually, we have to depend so many people, so many things, right? So if the people or the thing that you depend on, depend on, not behaving the way you don't like, then our happiness is gone, right? Our happiness is gone. So therefore, of course, we have happiness. We can enjoy with our eye, with our ear with the word tan, right? Eating a good food like this. We can enjoy it. We have happiness, right? So our happiness is dependent on objects. The food. If the food is not good, so your happiness is gone, right? This is an example, example. And you see, of course you love your children, right? You love your children. So your children are the source of your happiness. But sometimes they will not behave the way you like. Then your happiness is gone, right? You are frustrated and you are irritated. So therefore, happiness in karma realm. Happiness in karma realm. It is not stable, right? Not stable. But when you attain Rupa Jhana, of course, you don't need to depend on outside objects. You, you sit and you meditate, and you can enjoy the bliss of Jhana, right? So there is a happiness. But stay dependent on the mind. The mind. So actually that meditative mind, meditative consciousness, is not stable. You need to make a lot of effort, right? Make a lot of effort. But if you cannot do it, of course, it's here, you will suffer. But it's not like the first one, right? But happiness is getting higher. But we still have to depend on the mind. State of the mind, right? And Arupa, of course, Arupa, 
So you are stay away from material forms. Your happiness is getting stable, but of course you still have to depend on the mind. Depend on the mind, right? So therefore, but when you attain a type of supramundane consciousness, you don't need to rely on anything. You can you can experience the bliss of nibbana without mind, without senses. So therefore, nibbana don't need to rely on anything. So it, therefore, it is called anisita, right? Independent. So yeah, you your happiness is independent. So however the people behave to you or treating badly to you, so your happiness may not will not be affected. However, the weather, the food, the clothes, and the family member, everyone, right? Everything. So your happiness is not not shaking, not shaking, right? So therefore, Nibbana is anisida. So when you attain one of these consciousness, so you can experience Nibbana. You can uh, you can experience the bliss of Nibbana when you attain those uh, one of these eight type of consciousness, right? So therefore, it is called local drug. Uh, they transcend three walls or planes. The rest of the chaitas. We make Kama, Kama Cheda, Rupa Cheda, Arupa Cheda. The rest of the Chedas are called mundane consciousness because they arise in the sphere of three realms, three walls. So they cannot transcend. They cannot, they are still within the three realms, right? Three realms. So therefore, they are called mundane consciousness. Really, some people do not like the word supra mundane and mundane. But anyway, uh, we have to use it. It is a, we have a limitation of the word, right? Uh, some people use transient, uh, transient consciousness. And some, be, some people may use separate consciousness like this, right? So anyway, we will stay to the, these consciousness, uh, these terms. So here, local drug. Loka me the world. So the word me three world. Kama Kama world and Rupa and Arupa. So these eight type of consciousness are nothing to do with uh, not within the, th the, th the sphere of those three walls, right? Any question? Okay. No question. You got it? Okay, then I need for those I need for those who are new and bit, bit difficult and then, right? So I when you learn, when you learn you will understand, right? What is local drug? <coughs> so to learn that we have a three types of words. Supra mundane consciousness is it is another definition. So we can we can explain in this way as well. In this way as well. So supramati consciousness transcend following three worlds. Number one, the world of beings, Sataloka. So there is no um, actually when you attain a type of consciousness, the moment you attain, so actually there is no sentient beings, no beings, right? No beings. Number two, the world of existence. So actually these supramanian consciousness uh, go beyond the sphere of existence, right? Three type of existence. Number three, the wall of formation, Sankara Loka. Formation me, then uh, the condition phenomena. So when you attain, when you have happiness uh, that are connected with the senses, right? So that happiness need conditions right outside objects and condition of your mind right like this so there are a lot of conditions so when you attain rupa and arupa jhana as well the need conditions not without conditions right so therefore they are called uh, formation sankara actually the word sankara is a little bit complicated 
So I think uh, later I will explain the difference between uh, different usage, right? So if you do not understand properly, it's really complicated. So here, condition, condition things. So we can do, we can divide the classes on the consciousness by way of nature, by way of nature. So we have four. Number one, unwholesome consciousness. Actually, when you know unwholesome consciousness, I think it is good. So you can apply in your daily life. So I think you uh, you will understand unwholesome state of mind in detail, right? So I think it's good, this one is good. Unwholesome consciousness, aku salacheda. Number two, wholesome consciousness, aku salacheda. A good consciousness. And number one, bad consciousness, right? Number three, resident consciousness. Because of one and two, because of and wholesome consciousness and wholesome consciousness, there is a reset. So that is that is called resident consciousness. Number four, functional consciousness. So the last one is nothing to do with previous three. Just functioning. I tell you, I will, I will explain one by one. So when we classify by way of nature, so we have four type of consciousness, right? And wholesome consciousness, wholesome consciousness. Resident consciousness and functional consciousness. So, what is unwholesome consciousness? Unwholesome consciousness is consciousness accompanied by one or another of three unwholesome roots. Actually, it's very familiar with you. Loba, right? Greed. Dosa, hatred. Moha delusion. So if the, your consciousness is together with those unwholesome root, why not those unwholesome root? So your consciousness is not good, right? Not good. So we have to uh, we have to uh, define stated, stated stages of our mind based on this way, right? So if your mind is connected with greed, hatred, and delusion, it is not good. It is unwholesome consciousness, unwholesome mind. And some people may translate as an unskillful mind, right? Actually, in Mahayana, they prefer to translate unskillful mind. And you can, they are the same, right? So the three unwholesome rules are stated by the Buddha separate time in many sodas. So one of the soda is called Samadhi Soda, Majimanikaya, soda number 10. I think that soda is very important. So I will mention very often Samadhi Soda, right view. So actually in that soda, Venerable Sariboda explained so what is the right view. So the first one is if you know the root of unwholesome deed. You are doing very, very bad things, right? So what are, what are the causes? What are the root? So if you know it, you have a right view. If you do not know, you have a wrong view, right? Wrong view, like this. So these three unwholesome rules are mentioned in many occasions, right? So that these are very important. So we can define our stated status of our mind. So based on these three unwholesome root. So unwholesome chaitas are called unwholesome because they are morally blameworthy and protected of painful reset. Two characteristics. Normally, of course, uh, there are a lot of definitions. Normally, we use only these two. So the first one, so when you are doing something, it is blameworthy. You are to blame. 
Find the wise people, not the foolish people. <laughs> <laughs> of course, foolish people may praise you, right? So when you are killing somebody and they will praise you, bravo, like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> not like this. Find the wise, wise people. So that um, if they are blaming you, so that me, you are doing a whole sentit, right? Indeed. Recently, a famous a Muslim lawyer is killed in Myanmar. I think you might heard of that, right? As you know, in Myanmar, uh, we have a very extremist Buddhist. They are happy. <laughs> they are happy to see that, you know, uh, assassination. Actually, uh, uh, some of the most extreme, extreme people, even they praise the one who killed that Muslim lawyer. Actually, they are not, I would say, I would say they are foolish, I never say they are foolish, right? But many people denounce, many people denounce this is a um, terrorism. So we shouldn't do like this, right? So actually it's blame. So if the wise people blame it, so that is a whole indeed. Actually it's not very good definition. So actually the good definition is based on three unwholesome root, right? And greed, hatred, and delusion. So we have to, be, we have to decide based on these three unwholesome root. But um, the commentary already defined based on these two characteristics. So when you're doing something, if the wise people blame you, that is an indeed, right? No good, don't do it. Another one is protected of painful results. So when you're doing something, it's painful. Suppose you are shouting, you're cheering, right? I think it's painful to you are cheering and by yourself as well, right? So it is reset, right? Protected of painful reset. So you are painful, right? So therefore, all these are called unwholesome chaitan. Actually, this is a traditional explanation. Actually, when we use uh, unwholesome root, three type of unwholesome root is much better, right? So based on these unwholesome root, you, we can define. And wholesome, right? So what is wholesome consciousness? So we have four type of mind, right? And wholesome cheda, wholesome cheda. So here, wholesome one. Wholesome consciousness is consciousness accompanied by three wholesome roots. So here, three wholesome root. Number one, non-greed. There's no greed in your mind. No greed. So we can, uh, in other words, we can say renunciation. So even you hear unpleasant sounds, your mind is not affected. So that means you renounce, right? You renounce. So those are uh, negative things. So renunciation. No greed. Suppose you see a poor people, then you uh, keep away your belongings, right? Your belongings. So in this way, you're trying to renounce your attachment to your belongings. So therefore, it's called renoun renouncing, right? Ren uh, renunci renunciation. So it's the opposite. Uh, the same thing is renunciation and non are the same. Number two, non hatred. If you do not have hatred or away, that means you have loving kindness. You love people. You love animals. You love everything, right? Non hatred. Not only loving kindness, but also patience like this. All these are called all these are called non hatred. Your patience because you don't have <coughs> hatred or away, right? Suppose today I late about 10 minutes, huh? all the more 10 minutes. 
for those who apply this in patience, right? <laughs> if your mind is not affected, that means non hatred. <laughs> but if you, of course, actually, I'm not saying not to, actually, it's not good. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm worth the adding one information, therefore, it's late. So, what I mean is uh, just giving an example, right? So, while you are sitting, of course, you are waiting, waiting, waiting. Why he does not come down like this, right? That if your mind is irritated or annoyance, right? Non hatred. If you don't have even that state of mind, non hatred. Non ewe, right? Non ewe. So it's a, also can call it loving kindness. Number three, non delusions. Actually, it's called wisdom. And also call we can call it right view. So if you have a right view, uh, if you have wisdom, that means you don't have a delusion. Delusion. So it's called amoha, aloba, adosa, amoha. So if something is, if something is connected with those wholesome roots, so that is called wholesome consciousness. Actually, even uh, actually, there is a exact definition of those terms. So, what is aloba? What is adosa? What is amoha? Right? So I think if you understand definition of abhidharma, and you will have a better understanding, right? So, I think today I will I will treat about what is greed. So, we have a different levels of greed and different levels of craving. So if you understand different levels, you have, you have a better understanding, right? Better understanding. So such consciousness is called wholesome because it is morally blameless. So if you have compassionate heart, right? People will, wise people will praise you. And also it will give you a good result. So, therefore, it is called wholesome consciousness, based on two definitions, right? Here, you may see the word sukha vipaka lakana. Sukha means pleasant. Vipaka means result. So, result of good things, uh, good karma, so you will have a good result. Result is called vipaka. Vipaka. So resident consciousness, both wholesome and unwholesome consciousness constitute karma, called volitional action. So according to Bodhisattva, so when you take action, action alone is not karma. How is your motivation, right? It depends on your volitional activity, volition or motivation. Suppose you kill an insect, uh, an incident, how to say it, without intention, without any motivation. So it is not, it is not called karma, according to policy, according to policy, right? So here, karma me, volitional action. So you must have volition to kill, volition to steal, right? Relation to do and was indeed. Sometimes you are compared to do it, right? Without any volition or motivation. Because of somebody force you, right? Somebody force you. It's not a it's not a big karma. It's not a karma. So karma me, volition and action. So here, number one, wholesome consciousness. Number two, unwholesome consciousness. So these are called karma. You do unwholesome things because of unwholesome consciousness, right? Unwholesome consciousness. So that is a, the cause, right? The cause. You do good things because of wholesome consciousness, right? The cause, good, good cause, right? Good cause. So because of those karma, there is the result. 
So when you're doing good things, a good result, right? That is called Vipaga, resident. So when you are doing bad things, and you will experience bad, bad result, right? Bad result. So actually we are talking about consciousness or mental state, right? Mental state. So when we are talking about unwholesome, wholesome, resident, functioning, so you have to take note that it's, we are talking about the mind, state of the mind, status of the mind, right? So here, so when you're doing good or bad things, there will be a resident consciousness. It is called Vipaka Chaita. So the result of wholesome and unwholesome karma. Not physical one, it is just mental, purely mental, right? Purely mental. The next one is functional consciousness. Functional consciousness is neither karma or is resident. It's quite clear. <laughs> it's another, or another type of chaita, right? It involves an activity. Still, actually you have to give one example. Normally, we have 20 type of functional consciousness according to Abhidharma. So out of two, we have two consciousness in your mind as a Buddhojana, in my mind as a Buddhojana, only two type of functional consciousness can happen, can occur. The rest of the 80 can arise only in the minds of every hand. Right? So therefore, so when the every hand do something, just do it because he, he thinks that he should do it. There is no craving at all. If I do this, I will get this. Not like this. <laughs> right? Normally, at a, as a Buddha Jana, so when we do something, right, then we have expectation or craving. Actually, we are doing a lot of activities, doing a lot of actions with the craving, together with the craving. Of course, sometime, of course, sometime, so there is a time that we do something without craving. So we do it thinking that it is our duty to do, right? So in those times, no craving, of course. So your action, your activity is just like a every hand. So in this way, uh, in one of the soda, the Buddha said that following uh, the example of Arahan, full moon and new moon day, you should keep a precept. <laughs> Sometimes we have to uh, follow their example, right? So what I mean is, sometimes, suppose I'm in teaching Abhidharma, I'm teaching that thinking that I should teach, I should share my knowledge. So actually, this is the example of Arahan. So if, I, if I'm in teaching Abhidharma, expecting something, that is not the way, the way, the way Putojana do, right? Ordinary people do. So if, we are, if I'm in doing, thinking with the expectation or craving, it's wholesome consciousness, but it's not, right? It's not like it ever had. But according to Abhidharma, is that too resident uh, functional consciousness? The rest of AT, right? AT functional consciousness only can arise in the mind of Arahan, right? Mind of Arahan. So therefore, I think if you look at that example, it's quite clear. So they just do it because they should do it, right? They are preaching the Dharma. In their mind, they think that they should share their experience. The Bora go around, um, around the country, right? India, many countries at the time, because he, he do it with the great compassion, great compassion, without craving. He doesn't have any craving. If I do that, I will have fame. I will have a lot of place to live, a lot of monastery like this, right? So like this, he doesn't have any attachment. So functional consciousness actually is just do, 
just do it without any volition or good or bad intention, right? Even, uh, even Abraham do good things, so we can we cannot call we can, we we cannot call his action as a whole sign action. We, we don't have to call. So we have to call functional consciousness. Kriya Chaita. It involves activity, yet this activity not chemically determinate because there is no craving when they are doing. Right? So in this way, it is not capable of producing camera So as they are doing without, you know, without craving, so they are, though their action cannot produce reset, reset me for future rebirth, right? Like this. So it is called functional consciousness. So I think up to here, so we have learned four classes of consciousness based on the play, right? Karma, lo karma ram, rupa plane, uh, karma, karma planes, rupa planes, rupa planes, and supra mundane planes. Right. So actually, normally Abhidhamma also use Lokotara Bhumi. Bhumi actually means planes or rams. Actually, two type of planes. So the first one is actual planes, actual rams, human rams, and Deva rams, and Brahma rams. So these are actual rams. So another one is uh, in Pali we call it. Um, I forgot Pali. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, we uh, we classify based on craving. So karma loka, karma consciousness. So when you have that consciousness, you have karma craving, right? So when when you have rupa consciousness, so the moment you are meditating. Uh, the moment you attain rupa jhanas, uh, in between there is a uh, there is a craving. You crave for jhana, right? It's together with the jhana. So we classify rupa ram based on rupa rupa craving, right? Then another one is arupa arupa ram. So when the moment you are in Arupa realm, or the moment you, you, you are attaining Arupa Jhana, you have craving, you crave for it, right? So therefore, so we have to determine, we have to, uh, we use the word Bhumi, the word playing, based on the craving, right? But the moment you attain Logodra Jhana, there is no craving at all. Divide our craving, lack of craving. So based on craving, we consider as a bumi or play. Actually, uh, um, I'm very often explain that nibbana there's no nibbana is not a place, right? Nibbana is not a place. So we have eight type of supra mundane consciousness. So if you the moment you attain a type of Supramanian consciousness, you can experience the bliss of Nibbana. It is really exist. So we cannot experience with our mind, with our karma mind. We call it karma mind. We cannot experience. So only when you attain a type of Supramanian consciousness, so you can experience with your mind, right? Just like, just like that. So you can imagine one pass in your mind, right? One pass in your mind, just like that. When you attain a type of consciousness, local drachetas, then you can experience the bliss of Nibbana, right? So here, another type of uh, classification is number one, um, unwholesome consciousness, akusala cheda. Number two, wholesome consciousness, kusala cheda. Number three, resident consciousness, vipaka cheda. Number four, functional consciousness, uh, kriya cheda. Actually, next week I will, uh, we will, how to say, 
what is you this one I think you can uh, read uh, I think it's good to go with this one actually most of the um, many odd mind sentences copy this from copy from this book but of course some changes some changes <coughs> Before we learn a whole sign consciousness, so we need to know before we learn 89 type of consciousness, we need to know five type of feeling. Oh, what is it? Number one, feeling caused by physical pleasure. So when you have physical pleasure, that a good feeling arises. So that is called Sukha Vedana. Sukha Vedana. Number two. Oh. <laughs> it's not in order. <laughs> so to enumerate 89, 89 chapters, so a bit Amra Sangha, we were using this one manual, right? A, comparian, uh, a comprehensive manual of Vedama. We will use the word manual. So the manual use five type of feeling by way of faculty. Actually, it's not manual. A bit I will say a bit So a bit use eight type of or nine, uh, five type of feeling by way of faculties. So when we learn about faculties, so we have five. So in the area, so uh, feelings are explained under the five categories, right? But normally, in many soldiers, the Bora use emotional aspect. So we have a three type of feeling. So pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling. So the Bora normally use only D3. So when you have pleasant feeling, it is likely to arise attachment, right? Craving. So when you have unpleasant feeling, it's likely to have a way away or hatred so when you have neutral feeling it's likely to have delusion you don't know so because the feeling is not not clear to you a wager a wager or delusion may arise right like this the Buddha very often explain emotional aspect but Abhidharma use faculty method so there will be five type of feeling number one feeling caused find physical pleasures. So when you have physical pleasures, physically when you are eating a good food, when you are listening a good song, then you have a pleasant feeling, right? So that is called Sukha Vedana. And number two, feeling caused by physical pain. When somebody shout at you, right? Physical pain. So they say unpleasant feeling, right? Number two, mental pleasant feeling. So when you are sitting, when you are sitting in the classroom, you think about your pleasant memory, right? Then you have a pleasant feeling in your mind. So in your mind, it may happen. Mental pleasant feeling. And also sometimes, even you are l watching a very good movie, in between you may think something unpleasant in your mind, right? Unpleasant feeling may arise. Mentally unpleasant feeling. Number five, neutral feeling, opeka. Neutral feeling can arise only in the mind. Because when neutral feeling me not clear. So when you have pleasant feeling, it's obvious, right? So you are, your feeling is very strong. And when you have unpleasant feeling, the same thing. But the other time, your mind is neutral, not clear, right? Just um, how do they just feeling? Of course, feeling arises continuously. But based on our faculty methods, we have five type of feeling. I think uh, we have to take on this one. <coughs> Sukha Vedana, Dukkha Vedana, Somanasa Vedana, Dominasa Vedana, Upika Vedana. I think. Um, Pali, even you do, you, you do not know the Pali, so I think uh, at least an English, right? An English. 
So we have 54 gamma y trachetus. Number one, unwholesome consciousness, acusala We have a tray, unwholesome consciousness. Number two, rootless consciousness. We have 80 rootless consciousness. So there's no root. So we have a three type of root, right? No, 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 three, six. Unwholesome, three type of unwholesome root, loba dosa moha, three type of wholesome root, aloba, adosa, amoha. So these consciousness are nothing to do with that, those, those roots, right? So therefore it is called rootless -like consciousness. Number three, since fear, beautiful consciousness. So when you are doing good things, when you are offering dana, so when you are keeping precept, when you are meditating, before you attain jhana, so all these are called sense fear, beautiful consciousness. So even you are meditating, even you are meditating, so the more before you attain jhana, so all these are called sense fear, beautiful consciousness. Right? Consciousness. So we have a 24. Here, three and wholesome consciousness. Number one, consciousness rooted in greed. Loba Mula Chaita. We have eight Loba Mula Chaita. Number two, consciousness rooted in hatred. We have two, Dosa Mula Chaita. Number three, consciousness rooted in delusion. Number two, in Soda Pitaka, you will not find this, this type of classification, only Abhidharma. So therefore, Abhidharma method is different, right? Is in detail, but Abhidharma, the Soda explains sometimes, of course, sometimes too much detail, but sometimes not. So, we have a tray and also consciousness. Greed, uh, consciousness rooted in the greed eight, consciousness rooted in the hatred two, consciousness rooted in delusion number two. All these are tray, right? So we we'll, we'll go one by one. So a consciousness rooted in greed. I think uh, we have to learn this one first. Number one, one consciousness. Number one consciousness, accompanied by joy. Actually, here, actually, I forgot to write Pali. Somanasa. Somanasa means mental pleasant feeling, right? Mental pleasant feeling. One consciousness, accompanied by joy. So, this is very important. Joy is very important. Joy. Or pleasant feeling, very important. Associated with the wrong view, wrong view, deity is very important here. Associated with the wrong view, unprotected, unprotected, right? So there is a one consciousness. Another one is different, protected, right? The rest are the same. One consciousness accompanied by joy. So say that with the wrong view, fronted, right? In the way you can remember. The next one, dissociated from wrong view. Only the difference here. Dissociated with the wrong view. There's no wrong view, but you are happy to do it. Unprotected. Unprotected me without um how to say you do it very how to say by yourself, without any force, by one person, right? I think we will go one by one later. So this is the number four. Is different from that, right? The rest are the same. But here, you can look at here. Accompanied by joy, accompanied by joy, accompanied by joy, accompanied by joy. So these are. Somanasa Cheta, right? Somanasa. And round view, we have two round view, right? Number one and number two. 
Number three and number four, without wrong view. So you know it is not good, but you still do it, right? So I will I will give you with the example later, right? Uh, later. The another one, another four is different, only different equanimity, equanimity feeling. The rest are the same. Number five, accompanied by equanimity. So when you do something without trying, you do it, right? But in your company, so you're forced to do unwholesome things, right? By your boss. <laughs> <laughs> so by force, right? But you are not happy to do it. Equanimous feeling, right? Equanimous feeling like this. So the rest are the same. So I think uh, one by one, so we will, we will learn later. Given one is uh, given the example, right? So therefore, a big dharma is very precise, very precise. Sometimes it is a bit difficult to compare with a big dharma teachings and soda teachings. Sometimes not 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 the same, right? What is wrong view, Daiti? Deity means seeing and interpreting things wrongly. It is a general interpretation. So you see it wrongly. You see it not in their true natures, right? In it, uh, you see it's not right way. So wrong view is normally used with the prefix mecha, mecha deity, wrong view. It is the opposite of right view, samadhi. So if you understand right view, you understand wrong view. <laughs> if you understand wrong view, you understand right view. So therefore, the Bora in Diganikaya, the first soda is called Saminyafala. Oh, sorry, uh, Brahmajala soda. So in that soda, the Bora talk, the Bora explain 62 type of wrong views. So if you, if you want to know more about wrong views, you go to Diganikaya, soda number one, uh, Brahmachala soda, you go there, right? It's very significant. Why the Bora preach? Uh, no, 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 not the Bora. Why uh, senior men, who are, you know, who are in the, the first Buddhist council, who arrange all the Buddhist teachings, who classify teachings of the Buddha as a Diganikaya, Majjhimanikaya, Saudanikaya, Ekuranikaya, Nika like this. So actually very significant. They put Brahma Jala as the number one. So the reason is, in the Soda, the Buddha explain so 62 type of wrong views. So when you have one type of understanding, so when you have one understanding about the Dharma, so you have to know 62 type of wrong views. So if your understanding is not within th those list, that's list, it is wrong, it is right view. It is right view, right? So you have to compare with the 62 type of um, wrong views, right? So if you understand wrong views, so the rest are right views, right? So very important, you know, the Buddha preached uh, Brahma Jala Sutta the first time. So therefore, when to explain five type of wrong view, uh, right views. So if you understand right views, you understand wrong views. So if I'm in talking 62 type of wrong views, I mean, <laughs> you will not have patience, right? <laughs> I mean, better, better go and read, better go and read. I think um, it's the best to base on, to base on uh, Samadhi Soda from Ajmani Kaya. So in that soda, Venerable Sariputta explained that, so if you understand 
the root of an Hosan and the root of Hosan deed. That is Rabu. If you do not understand, you have a wrong view, right? Wrong view. Maybe next week I will explain based on that, right? Based on that. But here is a according to commentaries. Number one, Kamasakada Sama deity. Right view that Kama produce its fruits. Sindhya beings have the Kama at their property. So you have the view that, so if you do killing, stealing, and you will have a bad result. If you have such type of mentality, that is Ravyu. If you think that killing is good, and if I kill my enemy, my enemy, uh, the enemy of my religion, and I have to go to heaven. Right? That's the wrong view. So what I mean is, we have to base on the root, right? The root. So you are doing, you are killing somebody because you have craving toward your religion, right? You do it with, uh, with the group, with the greed. Expecting something. You are expecting that you will have a rebirth in heaven if you are killing the enemy of my religion, right? Like this. So we have to base on uh, whole sand root, we have to decide whether it's good or bad. So here, not only that, um, I have a problem, suppose. I have a lot of problem. That I can't accept my situation. That's wrong view, based on wrong view. You don't have this understanding. Kama Sikata Samadeti. Sindhian beings have the karma as their property. Because I have a problem, a lot of problem, because I do a lot of bad things. Only if I understand like this, that will be review. Right? So if I do not understand, so I cannot accept my situation. A lot of suffering, right? A lot of suffering. Based on wrong view, problem arise. Then I saw we saw some people are very successful in business, politics. Some are very handsome and beautiful, right? We cannot accept <laughs> why he is so rich. <laughs> why I'm so ugly. <laughs> why he is so beautiful. Like this. We cannot accept. We cannot, we cannot congratulate the achievement of other people, right? So that means we cannot accept the beings have the karma at their property because they become rich, they try hard, right? They do business properly and they are handsome because they are bad karma, right? In previous life, they have done a lot of good deeds, right? Therefore, they are handsome like this. So you can accept uh, the beings are owner of their good and bad deed, right? So if you have that right view, uh, you can accept a good and bad, uh, how to say, fortune of yourself and other people, right? So that is a number one is. So if you do not understand here uh, the result of karma and also the beings are uh, owner of their karma, if you if you do not understand this concept, so that is the wrong view, right? That is the wrong view. And number two, vipassana samadhi is a little bit higher. This one is a little bit higher. Right view of insight, which investigates formations as a perma impermanence, suffering, and non self. So, if you just see it, you may not understand. Actually, it's very easy. 
my arises and disappear. Then our body changing all the time, right? So if you have a very sharp concentration, you know it by yourself. So that is vipassana samadhi. The right view based on vipassana. Because you can see your mind, you can see your body by yourself. So therefore, you have right view about the mind, the body, right? Actually, this knowledge or insight is very important. So if you have this, actually this is a conceptual and intellectual understanding, not real understanding. But real understanding me only when you become sort of panna. The real understanding. But of course, um, before you become sort of panna, so just intellectually, right? Intellectually. And also conceptually you understand it, right? So actually, even conceptual level is very helpful. When somebody dies in your family, you can accept it. You know it is the nature of impermanence, right? You're not crying. You're not crying. So in this way, you can avoid, right? Suffering, soka. So this is a second type of right view. So if you do not have this type of right view, that's me, wrong view, right? Wrong view. As a ordinary people, if you have even number one, I think it helps you a lot, right? It helps you a lot. So in your company, if you think that people get promotion very quickly, why I am I'm staying in the <laughs> like this, right? Because we, end up, we have to appreciate, right? Achievements, success. Number one, number one, right view, right? Number three, Maka Samadhi. Actually, the moment you attain, you become Sodapana Sakaragami and Nagami Arahan, right? Right view of the path which arises as a consequence or insight. So, this is a four noble truths. Well, actually, we have to learn this one, Maka. Four paths. It, uh, it is in the supra mundane level. Supra mundane level, right? Then Falasamare, this is also another four consciousness. It is a man that ate supramandi consciousness. Right view of fruit, uh, the fruit which arise as a consequence of the path. So if you do not understand this one, don't worry. So we have to go there. So when we learn supramandi consciousness, so I will explain in detail, very details. But if you do not understand, Feel free, eh? <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> it's very important to clarify. Eh? The last one, so when you become Sodapana Sakaragami Nami Erehan, then you have right uh, right view, right knowledge, and also knowledge of deliverance. Knowledge of deliverance. So these are five types of right views according to commentaries. But tomorrow I will explain according to the sotas. Not not tomorrow, sorry, next week. <laughs> next week. Next week. According to Samadhi Soda. So I think the according to Soda is much, much clearer. Right? So if you do not have right view, that me, you have a wrong view. <laughs> Two sides of the same cry, right? Two sides of the same cry. Okay, any question? The difference between wrong view and ignorance, right? Because ignorance is the cause of everything. The cause of everything. Ignorance, we normally interpret not knowing. This one was very closely connected with the wrong view. Because ignorance me. And understanding the way it is. 
So you understand the root of unwholesome deed. I say the root of unwholesome deed. So that is um, how to say. If you have moha ignorance, you cannot see it, right? Then um, in vipassana level, if you cannot see the nature of impermanence, the nature of mind and body, that's called ignorance. So based on ignorance, you have a wrong view. You think that your mind is permanent. So actually very closely connected. So therefore, in, uh, in some of the soda, the Buddha said that ignorance is forerunner of everything. If you have ignorance and wrong view, follow. Right? Very closely connected. So ignorant means not knowing the reality. But uh, wrong view means based on that you have a wrong interpretation or wrong understanding. Right? It's different. Any question? Sorry? Sorry? So, so sorry. <laughs> there is a problem. I can't hear. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Actually, um, as I say, it is a two sides of the same coin, right? So, if you have wrong view, you don't have a right view. So if you have a right view, you don't have a wrong view. Dissociated, with, uh, dissociated from wrong view me, you have a right view. Sometimes you understand that stealing the property of other people is not good. But you have a right view. But you stay, steal it. <laughs> so therefore disassociated from wrong view but happily you steal it like this right so actually uh, disassociated from wrong view me you have a right view yeah thank you and it, uh, time is up thank you for the question so we will close our lesson now